Hello and welcome back. Kamal here with yet another very interesting integral. We have the integral from negative to positive infinity of e to the x divided by 1 plus x squared. The whole thing is divided by 1 plus x squared and being multiplied by the cosine of 1 divided by 1 plus x squared. So the first thing we need to do is to stare at the integral and exclaim, what the absolute hell is going on here? I mean, seriously. And then, of course, we notice that we could make a nice little substitution here. We could let x here equal the tangent of u. And that, of course, means that dx here equals secant square u du. And as x approaches positive infinity, u, which would be the inverse tangent of x, would approach pi by 2. And as x approaches negative infinity, you will approach negative pi by 2. So i here is now the integral from negative pi by 2 to positive pi by 2 of e to the tangent u divided by 1 plus tangent square would be secant square u divided by, again, we have secant square u. We have the cosine of 1 divided by secant square u, so things are actually coming along quite nicely here. So we have secant square u du as how the differential element dx transformed. We have some nice cancellation taking place. So that means we have the integral from negative to positive pi by 2 of e to the now tangent equals sine u times secant u. And we're dividing this thing by secant square u. So we have, again, some nice cancellation. We have the cosine of cosine square u du, and we have sine divided by secant, which is the same thing as sine times cosine. So we have the integral from negative to positive pi by 2 of e to the sine u times cosine u times the cosine of cosine square u du, which is, again, quite an interesting structure. But by virtue of symmetry, a transformation here would be quite welcome. What if I let u here equal to pi by 2 minus theta, which would imply that du equals negative d theta, and as u approaches pi by 2, we have theta approaching 0 as the upper limit, and as u approaches negative pi by 2, theta here approaches pi. So that means i is now the integral from pi to 0, of e to the sine of pi by 2 minus theta is the cosine of theta. So we have cosine theta times sine theta times cosine of sine square theta negative d theta. And of course, we get rid of the negative sign by switching up the limits of integration. Okay, cool. So that's our new integral, and it does look pretty damn interesting. I mean... Wow, that is some structure we have. So let's recall the cosine times sine is one half of the sine of two times that angle. So we have integral zero to pi, terribly sorry about that, of e to the one half of sine two theta times cosine of what exactly would sine squared equal? Well, sine squared equals one minus cosine two theta divided by 2 d theta. And now one last transformation, and let's just recall, let's just rename the dummy variable back to x. So we're going to let 2 theta equal x. So as x approaches 0, as theta approaches 0, you get x approaching 0, and as theta approaches pi, you have x approaching 2 pi. So i is now the integral from 0 to 2 pi of e to the 1 half of sine x times the cosine of 1 minus cosine x divided by 2. And the differential element transforms according to d theta equals 1 half of dx. So we have this factor of 1 half outside dx. That was pretty interesting. But the benefit of all our transformations is now we have e to the, well, single trig function instead of two trig functions being multiplied with each other. 
And we do have an interesting structure as the argument for the cosine thingy, but that's no big deal whatsoever. We're about to invoke Euler's beautiful formula, whereby we do know that e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i times sine of theta. So this implies that i here is actually one half the real part of the integral from zero to two pi, terribly sorry about that, of e to the one half times sine x times e to the one half times one minus cosine x, which does look pretty cool. Wait, e to the i by two times one minus cosine x. And again, that looks extremely cool. But how on earth does this benefit us? Well, if we expand the exponential function here, we have one half the real part of the integral from zero to two pi of e to the one half sine x times e to the i by two times e to the negative i by two times cosine x dx and e to the i by two is just a constant so we take it outside the integration operator so we have one half the real part of e to the i by two times the integral from zero to two pi of e to the what on earth do we have we can factor out one half we're left with sine x minus i times cosine x Okay, cool. Things are looking quite interesting now. If I factor out i from the argument up here, I'll in fact get one half the real part of e to the i by two times the integral from zero to two pi of e to the i by two times, mm. now we have, uh, I'll factor out negative i so that we have cosine x minus one by i and one by i is in fact negative i so that means we have plus i times sine of x which is quite nice because from Euler's formula we know that's just a complex exponential function so we're interested in one half the real part of e to the i by two times this very cool integral the integral from zero to pi by two of e to the negative i by two times e to the i x dx. Hindsight is of course 2020 and I hope by now all of those transformations at least seem rational and justified because we were trying to compress all of that trigonometric in information into this integral of a complex exponential function which is quite easy to evaluate and the limits here being 0 and 2 pi are actually pretty convenient. Let me expand on, on what I'm trying to say. We're going to call this integral here i sub 1 and we need the series expansion for e to the z. We know that this thing equals the sum over the non-negative integers k of z to the k divided by k factorial. And this implies that our complex exponential, that's e to the negative i by 2 times e to the i x, equals the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative i by 2 to the k times e to the i k x divided by k factorial. Now, there's a very important term within the series that is the term corresponding to k equal to zero. So I'm going to single that out, whereby we have, well, negative i by two to the zero is of course one and zero factorial is again one, e to the zero is one. So we have one plus the sum over the positive integers k now, of negative i to the k times e to the i k x divided by two to the k times k factorial. So this means the integral i sub one is in fact the integral from zero to two pi of the sum over the positive integers k of negative one, terribly sorry about that, negative i, it should be negative i to the k times e to the i k x divided by 2 to the k times k factorial plus this term of 1. Okay, cool. Integration with respect to x. Now, of course, we're going to invoke the linearity of the integration operator. We have the integral from 0 to 2 pi of dx plus the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the sum over k of negative i to the k times e to the i k x divided by 2 to the k k factorial dx. The first integral here sorts out to, of course, being just 2 pi. So we have 2 pi 
plus we can switch up the order of integration and summation operators to get the sum over k and of course now we can take all of those terms independent of x outside the integration operator so we have negative i to the k divided by 2 to the k times k factorial and inside the integral as the integrand that is we have e to the i k x dx which is pretty easy to evaluate this thing here is just e to the i k x divided by i k with the limits being 0 and 2 pi so that equals 1 by i k times e to the 2 pi i k minus e to the 0 being 1 and of course this thing also equals 1 okay cool that means the entire thing is just going to collapse to a big fat zero quite convenient and this implies that the integral i sub one in fact equals two pi so we know the result for the integral and all we need to do is take the real part of the result wait we have one half the real part of e to the i by two times two pi and of course the twos cancel out pi is just a constant here so we have pi times the real part of e to the i by two which by Euler's beautiful formula, wait, much better, which by Euler's beautiful formula equals the cosine of one half. So that's a very surprising result. I mean, I do not think I've seen the cosine of one half pop up anywhere on the channel. So yeah, this was a very cool integral, beautiful solution development and a, an oddly satisfying result. I hope you enjoyed the video. More importantly, I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Share the video to help the channel grow. Do drop me a follow on Instagram. And in case you like the content I'm putting out, consider supporting me on Patreon. All links are in the description box. Thank you. See you next time.